Wow, man. Well, welcome back to Chicago. Thank you. Right? You're a Northwestern alum. I am. My, my, my filmmaking career began uh, here in Evanston, Illinois. Yeah. So what's cool is I was uh, realizing that uh, Mauro, your cinematographer, yeah. is from the suburbs here, grew up in Palatine, mm -hmm. went to Columbia. So did you guys get on at all about like your history in Chicago? No, we never talked about that, actually. But when I was at Northwestern, you know, Columbia was the other, you know, great local film yeah. school. And um, there was times where uh, our, our projects overlapped. Um, I know they had a really good program for cinematographers too. You know, Northwestern wasn't as so production based, um, yeah. but um, I found a way to make it production based on my own because I was so into, into making movies. Yeah, and they had amazing gear, and and um, it, it was it was it was I learned so much there. But Mauro, I just loved his work. I mean, I, I had seen, you know. I, I've always loved uh, the Ma the Antoine Fuqua movies, Training Day, he's, and Southpaw. I just thought those movies look incredible. You know, he's gone on to do enormous movies like uh, Spider Man, Avatar, Avatar, Avatar yeah, yeah, like last all blue screen, huge, huge, <laughs> as big as they get. Yeah. Um, but I, but I just wanted, you know, he hadn't done a, a movie like this in a long time, and um, and I think that's why he was drawn to it. The challenge of like shooting a movie in twenty six days. Yeah. Which is unbelievable. Yeah, I I know we're here to talk about a good person, which is phenomenal. But uh, out of curiosity, so you did a Super Bowl commercial mm. with John Travolta, so it's you and Donald singing and dancing in like a cul-de-sac about cell phones. Was that surreal at all for you? Yeah. At any moment, did you stop and you're like, "What's going on?" Yeah, man. I mean, I <laughs> I, I love you, you talk about liking sports. I, yeah, I like musicals. I love um, yeah, I love musical theater. I I was you know I was raised. My father, my late father, loved musicals. So they were just always a part of my life. So singing and dancing Grease with Travolta yeah. for the Super Bowl, that was crazy. So musicals, that's interesting, because music, you're, as a writer, director, and a filmmaker, a lot of people kind of attribute you and music together. Like the music kind of drives the story or does yeah. it drive the creative behind it? So um, I was in college when Garden State came out and that was like formative for a lot of us. So I was in acting school, the film, we're like, oh my God, it's like, the music and everything is perfect and yeah. you're using it to tell this story. So in your process writing, are you listening to music in the process while writing or does that come later for you? Um, I can't listen while I'm actually writing. I, I find it too distracting. I, have, I need a quiet room, but yeah. I do, I kind of always just have running playlists on my phone of, of songs that would be great in movies. You know, sometimes yeah. you hear something and you go, this is something in me. And it's probably from, from being raised on musicals that, that I just go, that's, there's something cinematic about that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it goes, but, but I'm going to put that in the, in the, this would be awesome in a movie playlist, right. you know, and it isn't really, and you can have ideas, but it isn't until editorial where you, something just, you know, an alchemy can happen where, where, where the visuals fall in line with the right song and you get goosebumps uh, and you get a hair stand up on your arm. Yeah. You just don't know until you try it. And it can be a song you love so much that you listen to over and over again and you try it to picture and there's just nothing. It falls yeah. flat. It doesn't work. There's just, it's, 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 it's so much trial and error of finding like the moment where you go, well, that's obviously the song. That yeah. has to be the song. Have you ever had a song that you desperately wanted and for whatever reason couldn't get it yes. and had to pivot? Yeah, well, plenty of times. And or, or what happens is you um, you fall in love with it, and it's it's been you discover that it's been licensed to death, and God. you're like, oh, I, can't, I don't want to do, do it again. But on yeah. Garden State, it was amazing. Everyone told me on that movie that I wouldn't get any of those songs. Like, th there's not a single person that said you have to change these songs. We're not going to get any of these songs. And yeah. I was just, I just didn't know what I didn't know. I was so young and, and wide eyed and green that I was just like, no, I'll get them. And, 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 that, and that attitude helped. I got, yeah. I got them, almost all of them. Did you bring any of that? I mean, now, okay, so almost 20 years ago, I guess 20 years ago from writing, directing to now. Yeah. Um, but walking on set with, with a powerhouse like Morgan Freeman, did you feel any, uh, was that naivete in the back of your mind? It was just like, it'll be fine. I'm just going to go in and do this. Were you nervous? You know, how do you give him a note? I guess is my, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I had made a movie with him. I made a movie called Going in Style with him, which was a, a heist comedy. So we at least knew each other. Okay. And that helped me um, develop a bit of a banter, camaraderie shorthand. with him. Shorthand. Yeah. And also just like, he let me, you know, if he got surly, I could kind of shake his shoulders and be like, <laughs> come on. Uh, and let me push him. And he, yeah. and he really gave, he trusted me to push him. But of course, with actors like this, you're not, you know, the directing, my style of directing with actors of this caliber is, is, is you're not really trying to, you're not 
when you give a note, it's more of a conversation. It's because they're they're so focused on the individual scene, yeah. and we shoot completely out of order. So my real job is is looking at the macro of the whole thing, and so it's a conversation. Like, do you think? Because we're going to this scene next, maybe it should be more like this. Do you want to try one like that? That's how I like to work yeah. as, a, as a director, particularly with people of this ability. It's, it's a conversation. You don't, you don't necessarily know the right answer. Yeah. And you can say, like, I think it would be cool if you crossed to the refrigerator here. What do you think? That's what my gut was. And, and mo most of the time they're like, yes, or, or can I go on the next line because that feels more natural. But it's always a dialogue. And maybe that just comes from being an actor myself. Right. So in terms of uh, improv on set, you have Molly Shannon in this film. So mm -hmm. Molly Shannon, obviously, SNL and mm -hmm. everything. So yeah. I feel like in a lot of interviews with comedy folks, you hear like, oh, we improvise the whole time. And, no. and in my mind, I'm like, is the writer in the corner? Like, come on, guys. You know what I mean? Uh, there and you've was, done a ton of comedy. So obviously, yeah, well, on you know, Scrubs, there was, I mean, right. there was great writing on Scrubs. Yeah. But on Scrubs, there was a lot of improv and a lot of... Um, fun had with it this not necessarily this is all really the script there's a few moments molly uh, talking about shark tank she was totally riffing there and <laughs> and florence joking around in bed with her partner at the beginning yeah. that was a, a lot of that was improv um there's there's some playing but but i i would say you know 90 98 of it is the script so you talked about um shooting out of order and you've got a lot of tone, tonal shifts throughout the film. Mm -hmm. You know, very dark moments, where a lot of moments of levity. Did you balance that tone on set, or how did you track tone throughout? That seems like it'd be the hardest part of this film. That's a good question. On paper. That's a good question, yeah. I, I, in the script, I think I really was conscious of it. I was conscious of like, whoa, that scene is really heavy. Yeah. The audience is gonna need a release. Again, I think it comes from just loving theater so much and, and, and going to see dark plays and and go and 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 thinking, the audience needs a bit of respite from yeah. this. This and is where we'd put a song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think um, definitely in the writing I was conscious of it, and then of course in in editorial um, is when you really shape the thing. Yeah. You know, you it's what that's when you go, oh my goodness, that that scene. I thought that scene was was going to be rough. That scene is devastating. We yeah. need, we definitely need to keep those two jokes in this next scene. Don't cut them because. The audience is going to be looking for it, yeah. you know. Um, it, so it's both in script and in and in editorial, really. Cool. Well, thanks. I really appreciate your time. Really appreciate it. Thank that you. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs>